so guys i'm here today with the managing director of waterfront services limited this is barbara and i'm so happy that she allowed me to come into her home today to interview her so i'll allow her to introduce herself and get to what we're here to do today so barbara please okay my name is barbara Winsumbati, and i'm the managing director of waterfront all services limited our reputation precedes us in terms of hauling shipping clearing forwarding transport container sales and then fabricating containers into anything that you want at all yeah so we are a subsidiary of global cargo which has been in business for more than 20 years mm -hmm. and has been strong in this game of clearing and forwarding oh wow, wow wow that's nice yeah so okay so what is it like managing a business like as mine that so what's what's it like well managing a business is a lot of things and um, i actually can't pinpoint or term like use one term for it is a lot of things it's coupling together tenacity perseverance ruthlessness trust me sometimes you have to be ruthless in business and some wit you have to be witty you have to be clever and you have to be innovative in a way that you have to maneuver your way through market penetration pricing competitiveness mm -hmm. i mean it's a whole ball game altogether wow. Wow. it's a lot Wow, amazing. So how is it like as a woman in society, like in business, like how is it like you being a woman? Well, me being a woman, sometimes you are actually underestimated until you prove yourself. Okay. So you being a woman doesn't give you leeway. It doesn't give you any handouts. You don't have handouts. You actually don't have most you most of the times you don't even have credibility okay. until you prove yourself that you are worth right. your salt like you have to be worth your salt mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you are productive and you are industrious you you have results you have to be result oriented oh, wow. yeah wow. Wow. because you need to prove aside having a face a pretty face and some other features that are different from what other people are used to in the industry mm -hmm. you have to be able to deliver wow. yeah that's amazing i'm sure it's really competitive as well it is it wow. is trust me so like how old were you when you like started your first job like your first paying job like how old were you well i i i got absorbed into family business i mean okay. my father staffed me okay. when i was doing my national service i did my national service for those in nigeria it's like nysc yeah, uh, right, right? Okay, okay, yeah. i my father absorbed me and then he started to pay me from there but then i wanted more because um you know in our society and actually in africa right mm -hmm. women have to prove themselves more of course i have siblings where they are males and they are females mm -hmm. but then you need to make sure so, that yeah. you have more to offer yeah. so i had this opportunity in my dad's company to mm -hmm. be selling containers for some expatriates and earning commission yeah. but mm -hmm. i didn't want to stop there i was relentless and i had to delve deeper into the matters and i got some few suppliers from abroad and I took a loan wow. to get my own containers. That's wow. the cotton steel boxes. I really love them. I wanted to own them. So okay. I got a loan, right? Mm -hmm. And then I purchased some from abroad. They came to my mm -hmm. yard, even though I had some challenges because the experts were like, I was dealing behind them and all that. Yeah. But I had to stand my grounds, even though I had to sell for them and mm -hmm. end commission, I still had to get my own, right? Yeah. So I started selling and then, um, there were turnovers, sometimes there were losses, but then mm -hmm. you just had to make Do sure that yourself. you're in this game to survive. Wow. Like you're so, in this game to So prior it. to what you said, like you got like consumed into family business. So would you describe yourself as like an upper class or a middle class average Ghanaian? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that is dicey. I mean this okay. actually hit me. I didn't I didn't expect it. <laughs> Okay, we can say I never experienced it. I didn't expect this, but it's cool. I would call myself a middle class, even though I I don't believe that human beings are, should actually be rated or classified in classes anyway. So I think I'm a middle class, and there's a there's room for improvement because we all aspire for more. Okay. Yeah. 
okay that's i don't good. want to be comfortable i don't okay. want to get comfortable because it kills ambition like yeah. yeah i'm going for the top okay. and i'm yeah okay so like i don't know if a lot of people talk about um cost of living in ghana cost of living in ghana and there are a lot of videos that show like foreigners talking about how expensive it is so i want to know you're a ghanaian young female so i want to know if this whole like the economy does it affect you as much as it affects foreigners as well it does Trust me, the cost of living in Ghana is not a joke at all. As compared to Devon, I was in Devon in April 2018 and it's cheaper. In terms of accommodation, their food, their clothing, it's way cheaper to live somewhere else than to live in Ghana. Yeah. So you're a Ghanaian saying, you see, because some people always say no, for an hour, I'm spending too much money or something like that. So for a Ghanaian typical, yeah. you agree that because of living it is nice. actually Very not nice. a cake walk for us it is not a cake walk for us at all at trust all. me because it's expensive mm -hmm. paying your rent servicing your car fueling your car doing a lot of things buying yeah. clothes mm -hmm. food amenities trust yeah. me so would you say um it's easier to succeed in ghana as a ghanaian than as a foreigner i don't think so I don't think so. It's not a bed of roses for anyone at all because people need results. Regardless of your origin or your nationality, people just need results. Because when you get the solutions or when you have results, then people tend to pay for it because it's like there should be value for money. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when somebody is paying you, when you get paid to do something, you should make sure that you do it. Nobody cares if you are black, white, mm -hmm. if you are Caucasian nobody cares what you are whether you're asian so, whether you're yeah. an arab nobody really cares yeah but then people tend to think that ghanaians are more soft-spoken mm -hmm. and they like to deal with ghanaians more or something like that but is that, is that true like do you get skeptical when maybe someone's from another country tries to do business with you like do you feel like maybe Ghana is what intimidated or just like scared like nah i'm not i don't want to be with this person do you ever feel like that sometimes i do I do. I wouldn't lie. It's not like I'm marginalizing anyone or I have some preconceived mindset about some people, but you have to be careful because in transactions, like value goes out, money goes out, mm -hmm. right? So you have to be careful. You have to have documentations, LCs and all that. You have to have something that is tying the person down to that commitment. If somebody says, okay, I need like 20,000 tons of maybe cash you or something and there are no terms of payment there's no mm -hmm. agreed terms there's no one in that country that you know that you can refer to there's no credible financial institution that is backing that person i don't think that you should deliver goods or you should take money out and do something with people that you are not really sure of no, because yeah that's very dangerous yeah, you're a very successful woman i can see that there's no ring on your finger oh my god <laughs> i'm sorry but like do you feel men maybe men are intimidated by you like because i know where i'm from nigeria when a man sees okay not all men but when most men see women that have their own places their cars they're very independent they make money it's so hard to approach them so i don't know if the Ghanaian men are like that i don't know but do you feel like people men are intimidated by you well i don't think that the right men are intimidated okay yeah because people would like to date someone that they would want to be like or someone that they would like to look up to mm -hmm. right so well i had a toxic relationship some mm -hmm. time past and mm -hmm. i realized it was because of some economic differences like financial differences excuse me to okay. say because anything that came up was because i had money oh, okay yeah so to the wrong people I might be like threatening okay. and I might be daunting and mm -hmm. all that but to someone who wants to help me and feels like we have a purpose together and we have a life together okay. I don't think I'll be intimidated okay. to the person okay. well that's nice so and in a nutshell okay so what are like your long-term goals I'm sure you already established some of your short-term goals what are your long-term goals for yourself as a managing director and also a container seller as you like to say <laughs> what are your well long goals? my long-term goals are to be to be one of the youngest people in the fortune 100 companies there's a fortune 100 companies and they make the the biggest impact and they move weights mm -hmm. in and out in mm -hmm. terms of 
HR that's like how big their company is how many people they are employing and my long-term goals is to actually have a firm that would solve most of the problems and to dominate the market wow wow, yeah. wow impressive. yes impressive. every aspect in yeah. oil and gas and mm -hmm. then in construction too mm -hmm. and then the import and export okay. i want to do no less than um maybe let's say three thousand metric tons a month like mm -hmm. moving in cash crops like cashew mm -hmm. And things like that, mm. and I would like to go into real estate one day too. Okay, okay, wow, as I wow, declare that, that's, forward. That's a, so, like, what is the biggest? Okay, let me not say biggest. What is one of the most biggest challenges you have ever faced in your business? Like, what is that one challenge that you thought? Yeah. I do it again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I also do hauling and tracking, right? So some days, some day, I thought I was going to die because I was supposed to haul like a thousand and one bags of rice mm -hmm. on a track. And I had given clear cut instructions, right? Yeah. On what the driver had to do. He had to buy tapolis. I had provided this for this driver and all that and ropes and everything. The driver gets into the port, takes a turn, which is unauthorized. And there was a sharp one at that and ripped out all the ropes. And you could see the bags of rice, thousand bags of rice, which one is like 250 Ghana city tumbling down. As he best like he best like almost 80 bags in the port. Then later on he went to throw about hundred bags into a ditch. Oh my God. Wow. I actually thought I was gonna die but, on that day. Wow. But then thanks to marine insurance and everything, mm -hmm. yeah, the company was insured with them. And then we had to make some negotiations. It's good to create contacts. Yeah. Some of my contacts helped me out. And then mm -hmm. the importers knew that it wasn't my fault because this was the first of it that had ever happened wow. in my delivery. Wow. So you did so the moral lessons that you felt bad but you didn't quit because there are a lot yes. of people that maybe something needs to happen. Yeah. But like, I'm quitting. I know, right? Yeah, you don't really have to easy. quit. Because there are some days that you actually feel like you are going to die, but you won't die. Trust me. You won't die. Yeah. Wow, wow. That, that, that's, that's amazing. So, like, what advice would you give maybe young Ghanaians or young foreigners that are trying to, like, have a ground in society in terms of the business world or start up a business? Like, what advice would you give? Yeah, I feel like in business, you have to be innovative. You have to be innovative and you need to sell yourself instead of meeting someone and just fraternizing and doing that simple chit chat you need to sell yourself and you need to be confident you need to believe yourself like some people are good like they might be good with what they have but they don't have the opportunities yeah. so every single day is an opportunity mm -hmm. to sell yourself you are a walking brand so you need to tell people like I go somewhere I meet people no matter who you are or where I am I tell you I sell containers I do container offices I clear stuff from the port this is me I would actually love if I put my business on me than my name I mean what is your name hello I'm a container merchant <laughs> Right. I think right. that that is what brings money into my pocket. True, so you true. have to be passionate about it. Oh, Let right. people know what you do yeah, because yeah. some people have the potential but they lack the opportunity true, because true. people don't believe in them. True, true, yeah, true, yeah. Right. maybe I can deliver this but nobody believes that I have that right. potential. Right. Nobody believes in my capacity. So you yeah. need to sell yourself because yeah. you are a brand. Marketing starts from you. Mm -hmm. Wow. So like how do you um balance your work life like work and the normal life how do you how do you balance well my normal life i have amazing friends i try as much as possible to make time for them mm -hmm. even though i'm a culprit that's the truth like uh, my birthday happened last last month and then that's when we really got to hang okay. out but most of the times i cancel on my friends impromptu okay, yeah. because because of the nature of my work i need to focus on what will pay the yeah. bills then when we make enough money we can be all over the place yes. so wow. that wow. is it
amazing yeah. okay thank you so much Barbara for agreeing to be on this interview thank you so much guys for watching this YouTube video so this is Barbara here discussing about how business has been for her in Ghana so those people that have the perception that okay because you're a foreigner that's why you're suffering is a lie the economy is affecting true. everybody and if you feel you're too young she's very young but I will not tell you her age but she's really really young like she's just like three or four years older than me and she's so successful so it's not by age it's not by gender you just have the right qualifications and you said contact be relentless be relentless yeah try to like mingle with people persistent exactly so it's you go for it so starting off a business here in Ghana is no hard so just keep doing your thing so as such for manager director this, this is like your style of business I want to be sure yeah. you see so she's earning money monthly from that then business wise she's doing this so Guys, been a bit too. Thank you so much. Keep watching our channel. <laughs> Bye. Bye.